This episode is brought to you by Ariston Specialties in Bloomfield, Connecticut, makers of amazing olive oils and other Greek delights. Check them out online at aristonspecialties.com. That's Ariston, A-R-I-S-T-O-N, specialties.com. Ribs in the slow cooker. That is what we're going to be talking about on today's new edition of the Food Schmooze. We are at our new podcast home, which is faithmiddleton.com. The gang is with me. I'm with Chris Prosperi of Metro Beast in Simsbury, Connecticut. We have Carl Franklin, who is in Quaker Hill, Connecticut. And we have Joanne Church, who is in New London, Connecticut. And that's where the whole gang is. It gathers every single time we do this food shows. We're on once now every single week, and we would love for you to join us. Okay. Ribs in the slow cooker. I was researching online and I was looking at all kinds of, you know, things, and we were talking about topics, and, and I saw a, a recipe for ribs in a slow cooker, and I was so entranced. By this, I thought well, we've got to t- talk about this, and everybody uh, said, "Oh yeah, oh, I'm, I'm yeah. into that subject." So let's let's talk, Chris. How about you? All um, right, so, have you ever done it? Oh yes, I've done it before, and you know me, and I have a confession to start with. Uh, yeah, you ought to have a confession. Uh, I've gotten <laughs> rid of a lot of my crockpots oh, over the past few no. years because I find I am in love with the um, Instapot kind of cooker, which does both. So I do. Yep. I'm not not uh, slow cooking anymore. I just I and I still kept a couple of my larger uh, crockpots or slow cookers. Um, but I I don't know. I just love the Instapot that does the same thing, right? You can set it to to pressure cook, but you can also set it as a slow cooker. Okay, so for uh. ribs, I do them a little differently because I in all the years of using my slow cookers, and remember, I had at one point I think over uh-huh. fifty. <laughs> wow. Might have been a little bit of a problem. Okay, yes, I had tons of them. Um, okay, no, so it's for- because it's because every single holiday we would talk. You know, the gang would talk, yeah. and we would say, "Well, what are we going to get him yeah. this year?" And everybody mm-hmm. would say the same thing: "Let's get him another." Oh, yeah. oh, I see. So a lot of them were in the box in your garage. Oh, he had oh, God. A I, even, <laughs> I even have the ones that in that it can attach to each other so you can what? get like three th- yeah with one cord you can hook up three or <laughs> no. four different crop bots no, they don't snap even to each this other you can put them on making, a buffet he line he is <laughs> making <laughs> things across up the line here. I told you that's one of the ones I've kept the, the grouping of that is one of the ones I get because I like it so much alright oh, so let's go back to ribs so <laughs> yeah. I yeah. are you going to get to that recipe <laughs> <laughs> In all the years of using my crockpot, what I learned is that, yeah, you can braise in it and stew in it and stuff. But what I found is that you can also use it as a very low uh, temperature oven. Uh So just like a smoker almost. So what I do with my ribs is I'll take a rack of ribs, right? Um, And what I do is I cut them into into portion so i do yeah. them in four pieces right so everyone gets a quarter of a rib yeah. um, right. or a half a rib in two pieces half a rack you mean yeah or, then i yeah. take whatever seasoning let's say i'm gonna do a wait a minute, what kind of, wait wait Chris, yeah. what kind of ribs do you do, do you i like do the baby backs baby backs. i mean i know okay, it's personal ahead. and everyone no, has no, no, their no, opinion that's all right. yeah that's i just okay. like baby backs i find them and you can always find them they're easy to use uh, so I they cut don't them have that four- weird cartilage. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, never yeah. Um, can eat. So I cut them in half and then in half again. So I get four pieces. And then what I do is I'll sprinkle them with seasoning. Now, let's say I'm going to do like a barbecue style. So I'll put like some paprika on it, some garlic powder, salt, pepper. Then I take them and I put them on a sheet of tin foil and I fold them up like a little envelope. Right. Uh-huh. Sometimes I'll even spritz a little beer in there, too. Okay. okay. Then I do four Did little you say packets. Beer? Beer? Yeah, a little beer in the packet, and then I fold mm. them up. Right. Keep them moist. Keep them moist. Yep. And then what I do is I put a little rack at the bottom of my uh, crock pot, right? And then I put in I don't know maybe a half a cup of water just to get it going. Then I stack my 
foil packets on top of each other, hey. put the lid on. I like low because I usually tell people it's the best thing because you can cook when you're not home. So mm-hmm, you set right. it when you leave the house on low. Yeah. And when you come um, home, you know, eight, okay. 12 hours later, they're yeah. perfect. And then you but open- wait, wait, wait. When oh. you come in the door, oh, the, smell. the, the aroma <laughs> hits oh. you. That's the best thing of the rock pot. The the aroma hits you. The cool thing about this is that you can do this ahead of time, and then you know take them take them out of the crock pot, put them in the refrigerator, and if you want to do them like say for the weekend, you do them a couple of days ahead, throw them in your fridge, let them sit in there, and then you can brush some barbecue sauce on them and heat them up on the grill and get a little smokiness on. Yeah. Them. Or you could just eat them right out of those Brilliant. packets. Yeah, I mean, it's just a great way of cooking. The Crock-Pot, to me, does so many different things, and it does it so well because of that. Not Uh just low temperature, but steady temperature. It Uh keeps that temperature 180 straight through the cooking process. And it's just, like I said, for ribs or any kind of braising like that, nothing comes out better. And and I'll also say that I like my ribs to be not... I don't like them when they're... I know a lot of people like them what they call toothsome, where they still have a little bite to them. Right. Now, I want to look at them and they oh. fall apart, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't even want to exactly. I just want to open the package and just me looking at them, <laughs> the bones just fall right off and I eat right. all the meat. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> and so, and that's right. personal preference. And so you can right. do this with pork ribs, but probably the best, I would think, yes. right? Pork yep. ribs. I use pork so, ribs. Yeah, um, baby back pork you ribs. You want your uh, slow cooker to be on, uh, you know, six to eight hours. Yes, right? at least when you do it on low, I'd say minimum six to eight hours. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But the oh, 180 boy. degrees, do you, that's low, like you mentioned mm-hmm. prior, that, that the low is just takes longer to get to 180. Yeah, they both cook at 180, right? Because that's a safe temperature, blah, blah, uh-huh. blah. So, yes, they all take, they all cook at 180. The difference between high and low, and again, this is from the people at, Right. The original Crock-Pot, they own the name, right? Rival okay. owns Crock-Pot. Okay. Um, and they, what they said is it just uh, high and low. The difference is, is that it takes longer to get to the 180 on low and on high, it goes straight up to 180. Yeah. So that's the only difference. Right. So you want it on low. You want, so I like it low because it takes that long time to get, it may take four hours to get to 180. Right. Yeah. So it takes okay. longer and it's slower at that point. And then at 180, it finishes it off. And then by the time you get home from work, it's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Yum. And the house, Love like it. you said, smells of. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. Sometimes I throw cloves of garlic just around it, uh-huh. you know, not, yeah. not. To flavor because they're in foil packets just so when I come home, I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, the ribs. <laughs> and you yeah. know what? Our uh, our, our uh, mascot, Bon Bon, uh, uh, my dog Bon Bon, is, is here. He's curled up in his bed. Eat. And, um, you know, I was thinking, oh, boy, that is not something that I want to do when I, you know, Bon Bon is at home. Because right. it would drive him insane. It would, you know, yeah. to be smelling that for eight hours. <laughs> I mean, he'd be crazy. If it's high up on a shelf. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Who, who's, who's got something else? Who, who wants to, you know, I, uh, I can. You, okay, Carl, go ahead. Carl All Franklin, right, sure. Go ahead. So I don't, like Chris, I don't have a crock pot anymore or a slow cooker anymore. And I also uh-huh. have an Instapot style thing. However, when I did, have a crock pot. My favorite thing to do, and especially now, like in the springtime, mm-hmm. is lamb shanks. Ooh, that's that's oh, rib that's delicious. Yeah. How do you do it? It is kind of rib esque because it has the collagen that needs to break yeah. down over time, and it gets really sticky when you eat it. Right. Uh, so how I do it is I take the lamb shanks and I don't brown them. I just coat them in um, salt and pepper and dried rosemary. And the dried rosemary is really important. And then I put them in the crock pot with, like like Chris does, a little water in the bottom or a little chicken stock even. Um, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer that anytime a recipe calls for water, for steam, or anything like that, use stock. Why? You're, give, you're throwing away an opportunity to add flavor, right? Even if it's vegetable stock. So so with that, uh, I have this little rack that goes in the in the bottom of the crock pot. So I have some stock and I crush some garlic and I throw the garlic in there because I want the garlic to permeate. You can use garlic powder too if you want, whatever. Um, But then it's just a matter of set it and forget it. You know, you put that thing (laughs) on and you turn it on in the morning. And like Chris said, when you come home from work six to eight hours later, those things are just 
falling apart and the oh. and they transform right the the, oh. the 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 connective tissue transforms into gelatin and then uh. it gets like sticky on your fingers and all over your mouth and it's like unctuous <laughs> and delicious <laughs> no, my and the God. smells and the smell. oh the smell oh. where are you guys getting these crock pot racks i've never seen one i've never used one i've never heard Mine of came it came with it what the one i have came with my instapot and it's just yep. a little you know it's just off the bottom a little yep. bit, so you can yeah, put some stock in I there, and it doesn't. Im- I don't yeah. think I've ever seen one that small. Is it metal? Like- yeah, yeah, it's stainless steel. And I had, yeah. uh, okay. I probably have two or three because, I, like I said, I did have a lot of crock butts at one time, <laughs> and a couple of them. I know more than more than just a few came with. Like when you open up the box, there's that package of, with the instructions and stuff. Right. And you open that, and then there's these two little metal racks in it, and they're funny looking. They're like huh. they fit the bottom, but they don't. They're, they're they're like cut off, so they're flat on the ends instead of oval. So they're squared off on the ends, and then they're oval on the outsides, and they fit perfectly right in that crock pot that it came with. That's why I always use that. There's no other way to cook in a crock pot, which is to fill it with, you know, sauce or yeah. tomatoes mm-hmm. or right. you know, that kind of Onion, stuff. Onion, celery, then, carrots. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And submerge yeah. the the lamb shanks in yes. there. So remember Roy Imp? Uh, sure. Okay. So for Le Petit Cafe in Brantford, yeah. right mm-hmm. on the green in Brantford, and he did, he and his wife, Winnie, did this French restaurant there forever. And it was... So good. And so he said to me, we once went shopping together and he said to me, all right, let's get you some. He was going to get me some Chinese things. Yeah. And he said, okay, blah, 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 blah. And I said, well, what about, should I, you know, I was, a, I was talking about a rack, you know, because I was going <laughs> to, and he said, no, you know, you're just going to take like a can, like, cause let's say a tuna can, uh-huh. and you're going to turn, turn it upside down. Uh-huh. He said, it's the right you know, material, mm-hmm. and you're going to put whatever you have on there, and it's going to, st- you know, w- totally. what's on top of it is going to yep. steam that way. Yeah. So, could you use a tuna uh, can? Absolutely. In a use pot? whatever you want. That's yep. just something to get it off the bottom if yeah. that's the style of, yeah. you know, the food. Well, thank you, want. you, Faith. Now I don't have to go on Amazon. Faith, I've used tinfoil <laughs> balls. Sure. That's what I was just going to say. That's what I've I did. I've taken up, oh, like, when I, I f- when I didn't have a rack, I would just ball up tinfoil, put it, lay it on the bottom, and then whatever I did, yeah. put right on top. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's what I do. Yeah, okay. Uh-huh. Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back with more at faithmiddleton.com. That's our new home, and we want you to join us every single week, okay? We're going to just be really fast, and we're going to be right back. Hey, I'm Faith Middleton with the Food Schmooze gang. It's the Food Schmooze party, and I am with Chris Prosperi, Joanne Church, and Carl Franklin. And, um, you know, we're we're having, our whole thing this time is doing ribs in the simplest way in the crock pot. And as always, I'm going to do it the simplest way, even of the four of us. Okay. Julian, Wait, go ahead. What, go ahead. what restaurant are you going to? Yeah. <laughs> going to ribs in a can. Uh, oh, oh, we oh, might be hearing something be new. Good? I know. Well, okay, I, Joanne. I never knew about this crock pot rack. So my rack was a cup of chopped onions, a cup of chopped oh, celery, and a oh, cup sure. of chopped carrots. That's the you know, at the bottom. Way. Absolutely mm-hmm. great Absolutely. idea. Right. Yeah. And I really don't use meat a lot because I never wait for it to metamorphose into the, the gel state. Yeah. I always think when I put the meat in for eight hours, after six hours, I'm like, it's done. Uh-huh. And I always cut it short. <laughs> and now I know, just leave it alone. The yeah. rest, every yeah. recipe says eight hours. Every recipe. Nope. Somehow I knew better. But... Um, <laughs> and w- would, would it be the tough? Would would you say tough. wasn't falling off the bone? Well, right? never fall. No, ruined. Like uh. and me, I always thought. <laughs> see, it's overcooked. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I was right. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but even so, if I were to to next time I cook these and let the, the mm-hmm. r- ribs. Um, my favorite blend for crock pot seasoning is a 15 ounce can of tomato paste, a full quarter cup of fresh lime juice, and then mm. a tablespoon of the mint minced chipotle chilies 
an adobo sauce. Oh, yeah, I love that, that stuff. Oh, it's such smoky. a bite. It makes everything so good. And maybe yes. a teaspoon of that juice. And then two cloves of garlic. Oh. That, that's it. It could be chicken, meat. Mm. I've never uh, put tofu in a crock and how, pot. But how, well, you can. You absolutely I can, by the way. You can do this whole thing I'm talking about, or we're talking yeah. about, uh, with tofu. I okay. would do it with that recipe. Yeah, why not? Make sure okay, you get so, uh, free range tofu, though. Cause yeah. It makes a difference. Oh, and also, you know, I also thought if Amazon sold meat, it'd Man. be prime rib. Man. Huh? Oh, oh my God. Prime. prime. Yes. yes. Amazon Prime. <laughs> yes, I got it. Amazon. <laughs> you can make a lot of money right there. I got to okay. tell you guys a quick story. It was. It was just Easter, right? And the mm-hmm. day before Easter, I realized that I probably couldn't shop on Easter Sunday, so I went shopping on Saturday with everybody mm-hmm. else, for that yeah, matter. Yeah, course. oh yeah. But stop and shop in Montville, Connecticut, or maybe it was Groton. It was Groton. Had rib roasts on sale, mm-hmm. like a mm-hmm. whole prime what? rib roast, mm-hmm. a whole thing uh, of yeah. them. And guess how much it was? Five ninety nine a pound. I hope you stocked really? your freezer. I did. And I came home. Wow. And ca- That's not on the shopping list. I can't believe you spent all that money. Yeah, I, <laughs> I'm like, there were five ninety nine a pound. <laughs> wow. It's like half half wow, off. Wow. How did I miss yeah. that? That's, I've been how, there all the time. That's a great price. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So anyway, when well, you said prime rib, I didn't oh, get yeah. the joke. I was just thinking, <laughs> oh, I got some prime rib in the freezer. <laughs> Are you inviting us over? <laughs> Absolutely. Because uh, uh, that's going to get smoked. When exactly? Every Sunday. Oh, oh, so let's take a date. prime rib. It's going to get smoked. <laughs> okay. Um, so I, I'm a kind of, I'm sort of embarrassed because when I do slow cook herb ribs, I don't even go to the trouble that you people go to. So mm-hmm. for, first, I take that. What is it called? The silver skin? What, what, yeah, silver yeah. skin. Silver skin. Yep. Silver skin. Okay. Yep. You're so right. you just, it's just a little bit on the ribs on, and yep. you know, one side of the rib. And you just peel it off. That's mm-hmm. not, a, it's not a big deal. You don't have to go to any big trouble. It's not like cleaning a trout or anything mm-hmm. like that. You just peel it off. And then you, you cut your rib up in sections so yeah. that it fits in your crock pot. Now I mm-hmm. happen to have a quite a large crock pot. Yep. Wow. And so, you know, uh, I'm, I get nervous that everything's going to burn in there if it has to be in there for six to eight hours because I'm not, you know, it's so big. So, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So, but you know, with, with something like ribs, it's not going to do it. So you peel off that silver skin, they call it. Um, I, and you'll see it. It just comes right off. You just yep. peel it off. And then you're also good to go. And then you cut up the ribs so they fit in your crock pot. Believe me, they fit in my crock pot. And, um, and then I, d- I don't even go to the trouble that these folks go to, which was spices and the book. I just get a can of bar, I mean, a, a, a jar of barbecue sauce that, you know, happens to be one yeah. that I like <laughs> off the shelf. And I just pour it in. Over the ribs, and they put the lid on, and there you go, six to eight hours, and they're yeah. done, and the beets falling off. Nothing wrong and with that. It's just like, no. oh, I have done nah. nothing to right. this thing. I mean, it, it's just so good that way. Yeah, yeah. and I love it. Like you yeah. said, when it's falling apart, oh, yeah, right. nothing better. How? I know. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Oh. I can't wait. <laughs> No. Doesn't it make you want to? So um, yeah, I got to break out some crock pots today. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Can we do beef or pork that way? Yeah, beef ribs I usually would work do in the there. Pork. Sure, sure. Okay, I just want to make sure because I usually do. I do just pork. Yeah, sometimes beef ribs are big and they would only fit in Faith's crock pot. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you sure? And those it's are not... harder. Those are harder to cut. <laughs> yeah, the short ribs. Are, certainly. are you sure it's not short just two order. crock pots that attach together? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah, telling like, you, like Chris says, yeah. for the buffet, yeah. it works no, great. It's not. <laughs> uh, no, it's, it's not. No, but okay. um, you know, it's it's quite a. I, I do it for the six to eight hours because. Uh-huh. I yeah. really think you can't overcook these. No. You can't say, oh my God, like Joanne. I well, can't you're saying been... six to eight hours. That's a big difference. It's eight hours. Yeah, eight hours all the way. Yeah. No, I mean. On, I, on high, you on, could, on high, you could, you could eke out six hours because I've done it before with lots of things when you're in a little bit of a rush 
if you crank that on high, oh, especially the other thing too, if you want to go faster is, uh, if you're using broth or chicken stock or whatever, bring it up to a simmer and then put it in. That gives you a little speed up too. Uh, okay. Nice. So I don't add anything to my jar of sauce. Mm-hmm. I don't add water like you're no, talking you don't about have to. or chicken <laughs> stuff. I yeah. was going to say, do I have to? Should I be doing no, that? No, of course not. No, the juice comes out of the pork. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All that juice comes out of the pork, right? You end mm-hmm. up with a lot more liquid. Even when I open up my foil packs, there's mm-hmm. lots of juice in there. I usually uh. save it and <laughs> put it on the stove with some of the barbecue sauce and right and paint it on there before I put it on the plate. It's oh, so yeah. good. So now... Um, we are coming to the season of take your grill out and oh, get it mine's ready. Out ready. Oh, for all the year. Cooking. Now, some people, of course, have been cooking all winter, and they mm. live in a situation where they can oh. do that. Now, I'm in a, um, a condominium in Guilford, Connecticut, and I, you know, we, you know, very few people here would be able to do that. So, I, I don't do that, but. Uh, you know, I have certainly many, many ways that I can do any of the recipes that we're talking about. So, mm-hmm. um, but if you have a grill, you have a yard or a little teeny, 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 teeny porch at the top of your stairs, you know, it now's the time to go out there and start to get ready to, to clean it because this oh, is, yeah. we're, we're, we're now, I would say, because this has been a mild winter, we're at that yes. grilling time. You know, you can really go out there and do that. Mm -hmm. And it's so fun to Mm -hmm. get that going. Because now, with the season being what it is, it's not, you know, it's, I don't know if we're going to have another big major snowstorm. Now, what? I don't say it. I don't think so (laughs) this far in. (laughs) I know. I know. Well, but remember, you know, we just had Easter. Uh-huh. here uh, on the show and i remember getting all dressed up for easter and walking to you know my house of worship and you know there i'd be like uh-huh. trudging through mush you know snow and yeah. so it can happen oh yeah so sure. you know yeah. i shouldn't say anything about what the weather's gonna do but you uh-huh. could put your grill out there and nothing's gonna happen to it <laughs> yeah. and with sure grills to fine. faith i got myself a hibachi because i grill for oh. one sometimes and i missed having it and for the longest uh. time it was you couldn't find it on amazon now are you talking you about can... like a little weber smoky joe kind of size no no because no. i had that i had all those and they still to me waste too much charcoal waste yeah. too much wood Weighs too much everything. I'm talking about the 1970s the hibachi stoop. We used to grill on our stoop in New York with it. It's no okay. bigger than what 16 inches tops. Yeah. It has two <laughs> grates, and it is back. You can buy. I went on Amazon and just did it one afternoon and said hibachi wow. grill, and I was my jaw was on the floor i'm like i'm ordering it right now and it and was like really i don't know heavy, 60 bucks right, right? Yeah, it's, it's heavy it's, really, right, it's like the old one it has that back yeah. you know on the back of it it has those little like gradations where you can oh, lift yeah. those two little grills up and it's like and cast yeah. iron or something it's cast iron yeah. and let me tell you it uses two cups of charcoal <laughs> yeah Oh, and if you just so want to great. grill a hamburger yeah. and you don't have to light the gas and do all that, it's Jeez, just if you have so a hood, easy. You could use it inside, couldn't you? You could. I, <laughs> no, you could, no but I, I, I don't think we want to be recommending <laughs> I don't that think here that's on the a good idea. No, 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 no. My no. local fire department would not like me. <laughs> no, Probably not. Probably the cool Probably thing not. is, is you can literally do this on your front steps. The yeah. thing is literally, yeah, it's can. a tiny little grill. And So you're okay, saying I shouldn't use it in my cedar barn then? No. <laughs> did I? No. No. Okay. So did I say this? We did. Did we? Were we talking about this last time? I feel like yeah. I've already said this, yeah. but I I have one that fits right in the back of my car. You oh, know, yeah, it's yeah, like you, yeah, you bring about it to the beach. Two feet, yeah. And um, I take it to the beach. Yeah. yeah. And take it out there. And that's, I make a, a foil packet and that's yeah. how I cook. You know, fish in it. Uh-huh. You know, doing I've seen that, disposable that. ones at CVS that are like aluminum yes, pans I've that you put charge, and then you just fold it up and throw it in the recycling bin on your way out of the beach. Oh, <laughs> no kidding! Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's kind of great. Crazy, but I love yeah, I I, those little grills. I'm telling you, and they heat up fast. They're just perfect. Yeah, I love them too. Yeah. Well, okay, my gang. 
Uh, we're going to be back to see you next week, as always. This yeah. is the brand new Fooch Moose podcast, and we are at faithmiddleton.com. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Ciao. Bye. Waiting for the summer to come.